Here's how to build anything with OpenAI's new O3 Mini. By the way, I'm James. I was a machine learning engineer at Uber and Amazon. I built two AI startups, clipmove.com and chatshape.com. By the way, it almost feels illegal to use O3 Mini. I have been working in AI since 2019. And if you showed me this model back then, I would have completely freaked out. If you want to see an example of what I'm talking about, those fancy animations that you saw in the intro, that was all created by the O3 Mini AI model insane. Using O3 Mini, you can build any software application startup even that you want. And the possibilities are endless. But for today, we're going to create an AI agent that acts as an AI scraper. So it'll let the user input a website link and then a question about the info on the page. And then the AI powered by O3 will try to answer the question by reasoning and formatting the correct answer to return to the user from the website. So I have an entirely new cursor project open and it's kind of meta. We're going to be building a project that uses O3 mini, but we're also going to use O3 mini to write the code for the project. So you can see right here under the composer tab, you can use a bunch of AI models. Of course, today we're going to be trying out the new O3 mini. And the first thing I'm going to ask it to do is just create a new main.py file with a call to the open AI API. Uh, let the user input a question along with a website link two inputs from the command line we'll just keep in the command line for now we'll worry about fancy ui stuff later poser has now returned a answer basically the whole main.py file it's created the main.py file there and this is what i mean when you don't really need to know how to code to start creating software or applications you can just start you'll eventually learn just by reading the code and playing around with the outputs that these AI models are going to be giving you in apps like Cursor. So this looks great. I'm just going to go ahead and accept what we have so far. Yeah, so we have main.py. And now we just have to make a couple of adjustments. It's already added the command line inputs, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want it's for the user to enter a question and then the website link. And then it'll do the AI magic of scraping the website. We'll work on that next. What I can do is since the API call itself wasn't formatted exactly correctly, I can go to Composer and well, here I have an example of how to properly call the API. So I'm just going to copy that, go back to Composer and then add this, add some separators and say, hey, this is how you actually call it. Please update. And then while I'm there, I'm just going to say, yeah, I think that's, that's enough for now. So let's just submit that so it can update and correct the API call. Okay. So as you can see, it has now updated the API call. I'm going to accept that one. Yeah. Down here, the chat completions create, that's the correct version of it. I'm just going to change this to O3 and then printing the returned message from the API. Yeah, that all looks good. So now we're good to go. We need some way for the agent to be able to actually scrape the content from the website. So I went ahead and asked O3 to do this outside the main function, create a function called scrape website that should use whatever libraries you want to extract the clean text from the page. And then what it did is it went ahead and created this very nice function that uses Playwright and a, a Chromium browser, an actual instance, to go and parse that page, use beautiful soup, which is just a parser for the HTML content to make it look nice. And then it's doing some cleaning up here at the end, and then it's returning the text. So if I went ahead and accepted all those changes because it looked amazing, and you could see right here that if I will run it, I don't think there should be any issues. Yeah, so I'm running it on example.com domain. And if you if you open up example.com, that, that's literally all the text on the website. So it is it is working pretty much first try, which is awesome. I want to test out the agent. So I'm going to use this Wikipedia article on OpenAI. I'm going to go ahead and copy it. I'm going to start the program. So I'm going to say Python 3 main.py, run that and then enter my question. I'll just ask it, when was the operator released by OpenAI? It's just their operator program that's mentioned in the article. So I'll submit that question and then the website link. And then you can see it pulled all of that content from the Wikipedia page using the scraper. Uh, the scraper find that correct answer. So it says, according to the timeline provided in the content, OpenAI released Operator on January 24th, 2025. And that is correct. You can see here, Operator, January 24th, 2025. So that is amazing. So O3 is a fantastic choice for any scraper AI agent role because it is going to think and reason before it gives you the answer for what it's going to extract from the page. When I tried to build scrapers in 2023, 2024 using AI, a lot of the models like GPT-4 would just give out, spread out an answer that was like completely wrong. But these reasoning models are able to focus and 
much more likely return a response that makes sense given the user's input. Did you know that you can build scrapers like these and actually make money with them? Yes, every B2B business, basically every business is looking for data and data is like gold to them. So just to give you a practical example, let's say you are a real estate agent. If you could create a scraper that can scrape listings and return information that using an AI agent like this, that is going to be insanely useful for the agent or for anybody who's just like looking to buy a home, for example. So these are really powerful. Now I want to expand this project even more. You've probably seen the ChatGPT search function where you can enable it and then ChatGPT now has access to the internet. So it's essentially an, it becomes an agent where it can, based on the user's input, decide to take an action to use a tool, which is the internet, to search the internet and return an answer. So that is pretty much exactly the definition of an agent. And we want to expand our current setup to include that. So if we go back to cursor here, um, yeah, let's expand this. So the way we're going to do this though, um, our current setup with Playwright, we're going to have to write too much code to do it ourselves. So the alternative is that we're going to use a library to do it for us. So in this case, I want to use Langchain because it is a perfect library for what we want to do. You can see in this many lines of code, we can use O3 mini. In this case, they're using Cloud3, but we just changed that to search the internet and then return an answer for the user for whatever they're querying. In this case, they're searching what's the weather where I live. So this is a really awesome use case. So, and there's so few lines of code. So let's try it out. So what we'll do is go ahead and paste this in and say, and say, okay, hey, please um, integrate this agent setup into our current code. I do want to make it a chat system now, but also I want to use the existing scrape website function that we have here. Uh, to further grab more information from the site. Here is some example output from the Langchain agent. So then I'm going to uh, copy down here this output so that our O3, O3 mini here is going to know what it looks like and paste that. Now it has returned a bunch of changes. So we're going to go through them one by one. So yeah, so now it is using the OpenAI version from Langchain, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention that it should use chat OpenAI, but we can change that ourselves. So here it's replacing yeah, the OpenAI call with the Langchain React agent. And if you're not sure what React means, it's just a specific type of agent. And you can, if you just search up like React agent, you'll be able to read a bunch of information. There's a huge research paper on exactly what React agents are. And then, and then we're just printing this at the end. I'll just go ahead and accept all that. I think this looks good. And here we're using Scrape website. Where are we using Scrape website? Oh, right there, okay. I'm scraping the actual website. I'm just gonna update it to use the OpenAI uh, import. So here, instead of chat, uh, Anthropic, we'll just use OpenAI and then change this to O3 mini, and then we should be good. It's basically the same thing for Langchain. It can work with any model that you, Put in there and then let's go ahead and run that one thing we do need to change since i want to use o3 mini is change this anthropic use to open ai since we're going to use o3 mini and then same with this one here this will be come o3 mini and then chat open ai and now if we run it we do need to i noticed when i tried to run it i had to set the environment variable so you just want to do that so we just need to import that open ai key so we'll just, i'll just put I think it's API key equal to, there it was, OS dog environment. So I'm just going to accept that by pressing tab and then fix that. That's just, we just need to import OS actually. And yeah, it actually beat me. The AI beat me to it there. And then I noticed I didn't import the environment variable for the open AI key, which is why it wasn't working. So I'm just going to ask a composer to do that for me. So import environment variable, open AI key, and then he'll go ahead and, and do that. And I'll go ahead and accept those changes. Yeah, export. All we need is a search engine that you connect to your LLM. And now your LLM can access search results to use for RAG and other applications. So go ahead and log into this website and create an account. It should be completely free. And then you can just plug your API key into your .env file. By the way, you do not want to share these secrets. You can think of them as your API keys as passwords. 
So do not share them because otherwise you're just going to get charged a bunch. And yeah, you want to keep these private. So I've now logged into Tavily and you can see the API keys right here. And I have a thousand free credits. So I'm just going to copy that API key and paste it into my ENV file. And all of these keys are going to be revoked. Before we test out this agent, I'm going to remove some of the code for like asking for the website link since we will not need this. Um, I want to see the search agent actually use this search tool, the Tavily AI. Um, and to do that, I'm going to remove the website input so we won't need that anymore. And then now we will just, the user will enter the question and then the prompt will include that question. And now the agent will execute whatever tools it needs and it'll come up with its own queries for the search engine. Awesome. So I'm going to run it one more time where I specifically ask it for the exact day. So find the exact day of the OpenAI operator uh, release date. Uh, use multiple searches if necessary. So I just want to see if this works and how it changes the AI agent's actions. So we can see here this recent one, heavily search results. It found the this article here, meet OpenAI operator, AI, AI agent for smart browsing and tasks. And now you can see it's actually done multiple searches this time, just like I asked. So the, the agent is able to respond to the user input, which is really awesome. And it's actually, let me see here. It's final response is 2025, 123, suggesting that the release occurred. Yeah, and that's exactly correct. So that's fantastic. O3 mini is a complete monster when it comes to answering search queries. I found it just perfect for this specific use case. So if you wanna see an even deeper dive into building AI agents for search, go watch the video I made right before this one on this YouTube channel. Um, I'll link it in the description. That video would be perfect if you're looking for even more content in that area. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next, and I'll see you next time.